you start out like this. This is a Bull Shad Bull Gill 4x4, one of the minis. And you end up with something similar to this. Now this isn't complete, but this is a tips and tricks for the week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a game changer. And you can go from zero to glitzy in about two minutes. Let's make something cool today. So a lot of the times on the channel I'm talking about basics, how to do things, how to mesh, how to use stencils. I've gone over my line of stencils and who I get them from and most of the stuff you'll see this thick folder back here. I cut my own stencils 80 still 80% of the time. I do use Brian Best and I definitely use Russ Allen and Insane. So that's primarily where I get my stencils from. We've talked about different types of paint. I do want to go in depth on paint, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. This is more prominent in makeup for movies, for artists that are doing airbrush and gore and like all the all the psycho type films horror films because it takes literally hours upon hours upon hours to get that transformation from a normal human face into something that looks like the night king or you know the walking dead something like that but in between there's just your basic airbrush makeup so you can use a lot of different things to achieve a lot of different results and you can do it fairly quick. Today I'm going to do a very simple shiner pattern. It's not going to take hardly any time to spray. We're going to, I've already, I've already prepped this and what do I mean by prepping? So swim baits are a little bit different than normal stuff that you get from your overseas distributors or people that you're getting from in the states for crankbaits because they're molded. These are resin baits. So you need to take a little bit of time to prep your baits before you start painting them. Otherwise you can get what we call delam or delamination where your paint's going to come just separate from this because there are components and chemicals when they pull the uh, molds apart it's called mold release. It does leave a residue. So what I normally do for prepping on stuff like this I'll use a little bit of either um, an airbrush cleaner or what I prefer is to take a cotton swab, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Anything that's got a higher pH balance is going to work really well for you. Uh, but just thoroughly clean that, dry it really well, then maybe just take a little bit of water to get that alcohol off with. Just cool, temperate water. Doesn't have to be hot, doesn't have to be cold. Just normal tap water and just brush that out. So this is that Bullgill 4x4 from Bullshad Swim Baits. And I'm gonna give it a quick black overcoat. Now because I'm really only gonna do a minimum, minimum amount of actual airbrushing here, I'm not even turning the fan on for this. It's gonna be like a one and done type deal. But I do wanna coat this completely with black. Nice, good, even layer across the top, bottom, sides, face, And just get a nice even coat of black. Black is important because it really makes what we're going to do pop. Although this is a basic technique and there are other techniques that I'm not going to get into in regards to more technical patterns. But we just want to coat this. Hopefully you guys have had a good week. I had planned to do a couple more this week. We just got busy. There's a lot of stuff going on that, again, I'm not going to talk about just yet. Um, but it's coming. I promise you, it's coming. But just uh, a lot of stuff that I've gotten technically sidetracked on this week. Hopefully you guys are falling out of the deep freeze. If you can hear my voice, that means you have some sort of either battery power on your phone or electricity. So I hope that you guys are doing well. You are in our thoughts and prayers from Bullshad. I know a lot of people are still without power. It's been kind of crazy places that normally don't get snow and ice and all that nasty crap are seeing it for the first time in years and years and years. So please be careful. I hope you're staying warm out there. And uh, let's get into the next step on this bait.
we're gonna thoroughly heat set this. We want to get this good and dry. Now I say shiner pattern on this, but it could be the basis of a carp if you guys want to do something like that. Or if you want to add some detailing and stenciling in after the fact, you can certainly do that. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to forget about all these paints for a second and we're going to use the game changer. And because this is a pro tips and tricks, I'm actually going to divulge what this is. It's not impossible to find. People use it every day. People have been using it. Not per se in this industry heavily, but they've been using it in the makeup artist type category, movies, anything, professional airbrushing for, photo, for photographs, for magazines. So this is a product that's called Graftobian. And it's cosmetic powdered metal. It's very similar to eyeshadow or eye powder, but it's a little bit more concentrated and it's super, super, super glitzy. So you can see, it doesn't take much to do. And when you push that into my, if I push that into my finger, then you can see that it leaves that real shiny residual. So what happens when you take this stuff and you put it onto a bait? Well, we're gonna take this out of the cradle. I've done a good bit of heat setting. And now, kind of got a little bit out here. We're just gonna push that and you can see the transformation already, can't you? I know the camera's picking it up because I can see it in the little monitor that I'm using. What a difference. And that's what, 10 seconds, 30 seconds? So you just get a little bit on your finger and rub it into the bait. It's gotta be dry. I've been using this technique for quite some time, but it seems like everybody's using it now. Um, so it's no longer the hush-hush secret that it used to be. Normally I would just use little bits of it here and there if I were building for a client that is fishing muddy water or likes that little bit of pop. I'll take a dry artist brush and just kind of get any excess out of there. But right away you can see what a difference between this side and this side. So it's, it's a pretty dramatic change that your bait undergoes. And you will not get this at all anywhere near the caliber if you just prime it white. Got to be black. That really picks up that shine. And you just kind of want to rub it. You don't want to get too much though. Don't go crazy. Don't dump a bunch like you're dumping baby powder on your, on your infant. Um, you don't want to dump too much. You just want a little bit on the end of your fingertips. Just kind of rub that in. I've seen people do um, foil this way or work with it. Um, Garcia Rosa about two years ago did a tutorial. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to it. I looked for it the other day. But he played around with this and uh, came up with some amazing results. So again, it's not a new technique by any means. It's been taught here and there. But there are just there's a lot of people using it and a lot of people are like, oh wow, that's really... And it just gives you something a little bit different. And uh, the results are just amazing absolutely amazing but yeah if you want to check out Garcia Rosa his page is uh, here on YouTube he does a lot of stuff with hot foil and uh, really creative excellent airbrush artist and there are some others that have certainly made their mark with just basics like this now there are some absolutely amazing techniques out there for more technical baits but I will leave that to your creativity what I do on this channel what I prefer to do is give you guys a starting point kinda like jump off this little cliff and then you guys can get yourself off the big ones with that uh, parachute later but again you wanna pull this out real gentle if you have any excess that's built up and it'll stay on there once you push this into the paint it's gonna stay put so then, if you want any kind of a difference in color, you come back 
and give a little bit of accent. And this is just a real neat technique to employ if you're making carp patterns, if you're making, no, no, I'm not using that on my carp. A lot of people have asked how I do my carp. That's just basic paints and a really good stencil from Russ Allen and tons, 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 tons of hand detailing. One of the patterns that has been requested of me not to repeat, therefore I won't, but I know all of my audience here is creative in their own right. I bet you can come up with some of the most amazing patterns on your own. So now you can see that we have that difference in tone across the back, that more of a copper, and you can see the buildup on my hands is pretty obvious as well. But that is your tips and tricks for the week. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you employ it in some of your new patterns, and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.